Hello and welcome to Frankly Speaking with Jola Shotobo. Today on the show, we're going to be talking about the Fulani herdsmen attacks which have been going on in various states of the country and the government's poor response to these attacks. The, 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 the most serious of these attacks occurred in Benue State in February 2016, that's in the Agatu local government area, and hundreds of people were said to have died, thousands of houses were destroyed, but the government has not issued a strong statement condemning these attacks. In fact, the only response that the government has given is to suggest that grazing land should be allocated to the herdsmen, which seems to be rewarding them instead of warning them to stop the attacks. And since February, there have been hundreds more people killed. The attacks have spread from Enugu to Taraba. And seeing as the, the president himself is Fulani, one would think that that would make him want to quickly speak out against it. So it doesn't look like he's being biased. The only response Nigerians have heard, so to say, is a statement issued by his special advisor on media and publicity, Femi Adishina, saying that Nigerians are looking for a talkative president, that Buhari should not have to issue a statement every time something happens in the country. And I beg to disagree because when 22 children were killed in the United States of America, President Barack Obama not only went there, he actually even cried in the place. So each Nigerian life should be important to the president. And if hundreds of people are being killed by Fulani herdsmen every day, and the, the, the best we can hear is that our president is not a talkative, then it's very unfortunate. And one would think that this is the more reason why he wants to talk so, because he doesn't want to be seen as being a partial president. He doesn't want to be seen as being a president who is interested in preserving his tribe rather than his country. But all we've heard is silence. And as for the police, they keep saying they're on top of the, the matter, but people keep getting killed every single day. And all the police is doing is, oh, if the reports are saying 80 people died, the police will come out and say, no, it was just 20 people. I see the lives of those 20 people don't mean anything to the government. To the government. And these Fulani headman attacks have become so serious that the group has been named the fourth deadliest terrorist group in the world. That means we have two terrorist groups in Nigeria now, but all the government is talking about, oh, we fought Boko Haram, we have defeated Boko Haram. But there's another terrorist group just growing right under our noses, and there's no firm response. I mean, top people have been attacked by these Fulani headsmen. They have gone to the home of Nobel laureate Wolesh, Wolesh Inka. They raided the house when he wasn't around. They have kidnapped and, and kept in custody former uh, secretary to the, to the Federa uh, government of the Federation, Olufalai, which was a very publicized, uh, publicized um, incident, Fulani headsmen are on the rampage and the government is doing nothing, practically nothing. And according to a victim I spoke to recently, people are being killed every single day. In fact, he said today two people were killed in southern Kaduna by Fulani herdsmen. Yet, no response. The police is not saying, okay, this is our plan, this is our strategy. President Mount Barry is not saying, this is how we're going to stop them. The only thing the government has done is want to offer them grazing land, as if we're trying to appease these people who should actually be punished for these crimes. And now we're going to be speaking to a guest, my guest, Samaila, whose uncle was brutally murdered by these these herdsmen and he's going to tell us what happened and his idea of what the government should do and he's going to give us an insight into just how often these attacks are going on hello samaila hello hello samaila yes this is jola so can you tell us can you tell us briefly what happened to your uncle the, tell us about the attack, the attack was That fateful day, he was at home, he didn't go to anywhere, he went He was a pastor and someone with an upper church around them. And they lost a member that day, so he went there to where he was. So he didn't get to go to anywhere that day. But some of his members were in the bush trying to get some timber for the church project. And not only around 5 o'clock, they called him, that look, something's wrong. I think I had the machine, he had the machine, the, 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 the machine was faulty. I need to come over and get them so that and get something so that they can go and fix it. He got there, they could not fix the machine in the bush there. And now he now picked two of them on their way back when that's when they were attacked. It wasn't just the person that they, they were three in numbers and he was the only person that was target. But when they came, they went for him to be able to run. He could not run. He was trying to fight him. And he could not succeed because he was the only person. There were about two. Why the Fulani hate men could, and that, that's what makes everybody believe that the Fulani hate men. And we in this struggle, it's God that this man is strong enough to do something. And I'll chop off his hands. That was the end of the day. They chopped so off his hands. hands. Yeah, they chopped off his hands and let him be there. He was there bleeding. The other guys were with him were in the bush, they couldn't even come to his way. He shouted, and, Look, I can't make it again. 
they came and saw him beat him before they could rush him down to the hospital. He came up. That was actually happening that day. Wow. So sorry about that, Samaila. So tell us, how often are these attacks going? How often are people being killed by Fulani herdsmen? If you're following my tweet, it's an hourly thing. It happens every hour, now, not on daily basis, not on weekly basis. Not, no, it happens almost every hour of the day. It happens almost every hour of the day. Like, I was just in front of the Lengo Goda. Another attack that took place early this morning. Two people were killed. The whole of the village, the, the whole of the village is somebody in the village, and the whole village is deserted. So it happens almost on daily basis. Like a daily thing now. The funny thing is, nobody talks about it. Nobody talks about it. But it happens on daily basis. Like almost every day. Almost every day. Almost not even in, in a day you hear two, three, four different attacks in different places. From Benue State down to Nasharao State, Kaduna, part of Karaba. In Kaduna, it's the southern part of Kaduna, which is dominated by the Christians. You understand? Yes, that yes. The father is constantly under siege by the Islamic What about the police? Have... What is police doing about this? My dear. It seems the police have been overwhelmed. Because they've not literally really nothing about it. There has not been any profile arrays. There has not been anything, any any similar thing I can tell that has been achieved. Have you have you heard of uh, where the Flanese men were actually apprehended or something happens to them? Nothing. There has not been record of that. I think it happens only once after that of limbo. They were caught somewhere in Lugu. I mean somewhere in Obadana, in what they call it, Koki State. That was the only major arrest. And where are the guys today? Who knows about them? Who knows they were about? What has happened to them? But what do the headsmen really want? What do they want? Now, this is the big question we've been asking ourselves too down here. The thing is this, we have so many theories that I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't know which one they actually want to achieve. Now, let me clear something here. It is an attack. It's a one-time thing. They, they come, attack, and go. It is not a conflict. Nobody is fighting them. They pick their villages. They know where they want to go to because the whole thing is clearly defined. They pick their villages, they pick the place you want to go to. They go there and they know the people they are after because the bulk of the attack, almost or not even the bulk, all the attack has been on Christian communities. Villages are vulnerable. They go there in number. Now, what do some people think? Some people think that, look, they want to, it, 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 it's like it, 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 a continuation of the cells they had of Uthman. Don't forget that. That part of the north, particularly like North Central, was an area that he could not capture. And that's where the bulk of the Christians, in the north, you understand? Yes. That's where the bulk of the Christians come from, in the north. Some people feel it is a continuation of his fell uh, 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 war to dominate the whole north. That's one aspect. Why some things is an attempt to take over the land? Yeah, because the book of the people that I'm talking about here are peasant farmers. That's the occupation practically. They don't do anything. Mm. They farm. They farm. And if the peasant farmers, what is your problem with them? Okay, if their land looking so lush and so green, they don't take over uh, those lands from them. You understand? What yes. is that something nobody knows? Is it the land that they want to take over? Or are they trying to continue with the fell Usman uh, 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 campaign? Nobody can say precisely what they want. What they what want. They want is still a mystery to us. Please, can you, what, what do you think the government should do about this? What do you think the government should do? My dear, everything. Things are going to be done. is a sovereign state. And with a clear, defined constitution. And the major primary of the government, I don't consider that, I couldn't have this. The security of life and welfare of its citizens. Hmm. Now, these are the, the primary, any other thing in second place. It shows the government have everything it takes to cut these guys. These guys are not free from the moon. These, these guys are armed by certain individuals. Because the people in this does not actually come from, I don't know, from somewhere, from heaven. They didn't come from the moon. The people they use somebody is actually financing them. Financing them. Hmm. Some hmm. people that died on this bridge, my dear, I could say without me that I would. People that get killed every day are more than 10 every day. Now, now the chance of you being killed by Fulani, by Fulani is in the Nordic, Very about high. 8 to 1%, about half about of wow. Because almost that person of big of big right now in North Central is caused by Fulani H. Mm -hmm. So, the chance of anybody being killed by them is about 8 to 1%. So, I mean, does, it, does they, the government need an end of conversation that look, people are dying, their citizens are being. Killed, killed, killed. And nothing is happening. It takes nothing. It takes just a concerted and committed effort from the okay. government. Use drones, use whatever you can do. There's no, look, the president has been going up and down. No, sitting up that force. He was in Zampara not too long ago to sit up with that show that will fight Kefu Rizwalas, which is one of his conceptions. People think what's going on is the uh, 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 fight Kefu Rizwalas and, and in the no, Kefu Rizwalas doesn't even take the decision. Now, the government, the president was there to, 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 to launch a, a, 
it, 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 that was. But what about the North Central? There's no thing there. Yeah. There's no task force on ground to go after this guy. But do you think it's because North he's North full Annie? Do you think it's because he's full Annie that he's hesitant to talk partially, about it? Partially. We're meant to believe that. Because they have not done anything like told you today to um, I mean the villages that are gathered view in the local government, which is you know far from my own area. Funny enough, my parents stayed in Kapata, which is the headquarters of the Maluku government, and gather view a village there. The whole village is deserted right now. Some people were killed this morning. And nobody you're not gonna hear anything. The the domestic media is quiet. The everybody is quiet about it. I don't know. Is it because it's flying? And what do they actually want? What? It's raising their problem. Don't they know how to raise their cow in in kettles? Yeah. Grinding is not even the issue. Because the federal government has been so funny that what well, anytime this thing, this issue comes up, they will say and uh, they, they will establish grazing yeah. reserves. I will come and see someone from where is that farmer to go to? You want to take a farmer making when the kettle will become a state business. Uh Samala. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I'll have to cut you short now because we're rounding up. But thank you no very much. I'm sorry thank about you. your loss. I'm sorry for your uncle's thank death. You. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you very I much. It. Thank you. I appreciate, it. I appreciate it. So we just spoke to Samaila, whose uncle was hacked practically to death by, by these Fulani herdsmen. He said his, his uncle's arms were chopped off and he was left on the ground to bleed. And he got no help until he died. This horror story told, told to us by Samaila has become the daily nightmare of people who are in villages that are being attacked by Fulani herdsmen and their government is silent so terribly silent that we do not understand what is going on I mean like Samaila said the Nigerian government has what it takes to fight these people they force the militants in Nariko they are fighting Niger Delta militants they have a joint task force President Buhari has set up a task force to fight castle, cattle rustlings and Farah State. So what is the difference between those people and the ones who are being attacked by Fulani herdsmen in the middle belt? Why is there silence? Why is nobody doing anything about it? This is how Boko Haram started. Just a few tiny people here and there and now it has become a monster that we need aid from foreign countries to fight. And these Fulani herdsmen have already been recognized globally as the fourth deadliest terrorist group in the world. Yet. The government is still not doing anything and this is a very serious issue so i advise that before it is too late before we have another book on our hands president Mahmoud Bari number one to redeem his image that he is not a partial president to redeem his image that he's not supporting fulanis who are killing people he needs to take urgent steps firm steps to ensure that these killings are stopped he needs to visit some of the villages that have been affected. He needs to show solidarity because he is the people's president. He's not a Fulani president. He's the president of Nigeria. He's not the president of his tribe. He's the president of the entire country. So President Mahmoud needs to move forward against the advice of his aide, Femi Adishina, who says he should not be talkative. You, anytime your, your citizens are killed, you need to be talkative because that is your number one assignment. You have to preserve their lives. So when you fail in that duty, you have to apologize for failing them, for failing to protect them. And more serious measures have to be taken to stop these attacks because it's very obvious that these Fulani herdsmen are just being left to do whatever they want. I mean, the recent some attacks in, in Benue State were done over two weeks. Over two weeks, 81 people were killed. Why were they being allowed to operate unchecked for two weeks? We have police officers. We have soldiers. Why was there no help given to these villagers? They have a president. They have governors. They have representatives. Why are they being killed like flies? President Manwari really needs to address this issue of, uh, of Fulani herdsmen attacks to show that he values the Nigerian life or else the consequences might be very serious because these people might eventually start defending themselves and then we'll just have a full-blown war on our hands. Thank you very much for watching today's episode of Frankly Speaking with Jola Shotobo. Join me again next time for another enlightening episode. Until then, ciao.